I strongly support the disaster relief funding bill. As Americans undertake the physically and emotionally difficult task of rebuilding, cleaning up, and recovering from hurricanes and flooding and even earthquakes, we must see that disaster funds are there so that they can get back to their own lives as quickly as possible. 2011 has been a record year when it comes to natural disasters. The cost of recovery from Hurricane Irene alone could reach one and a half billion dollars. Illinois, we've seen it this year, it's been tough. From Chicago to Cairo in the southern part of our state, we've had blizzards and floods and tornadoes and troubles all around. Our state, like most other states, has seen the damage, has felt it personally. People are trying to put their homes back together again. Here's a photo which I saw in person when I visited my state earlier this spring around Cairo, Illinois, in the southern part of the state. It was an awful situation. We had flooding along the Ohio River, uh, which troubled and bothered the folks that lived in southern Illinois as well as Kentucky and adjoining states and Missouri. And some of our towns like Cairo were literally threatened with being inundated. They had to blow levees, which basically means open up a place for the river water to flow, and that flooded farmland in Missouri and Illinois. And we've got to be sensitive to the fact that there were real losses there that need to be paid for. That record fl flooding really slammed the southern part of our state. The devastation was felt in the entire region. The damage wasn't just there, though. I hear from people throughout the southern part of the state who are still struggling today because of this flooding. Anthony Miles in Urbandale, Illinois, is an example. Flooding from the Ohio River rose so high his home couldn't eat, that he couldn't even find his lawnmower in the front yard. All he could see was river water. In Metropolis, Illinois, my friend Mayor Billy McDaniel says people are still trying to get the flood water damage repaired in that town months later. The Harris Casino in Metropolis, which is a major, major employer, and source of revenue in the area completely inundated with water and hundreds of thousands of dollars of repairs that need to be done. Now, there are some who argue that when it comes to these disasters, we can't afford to help people in America. It appears to me that the guiding principle and motto of the Tea Party in America is this, just remember we're all in this alone. That's what we hear over and over from them. Whenever we've got a problem facing us in America where we come together as a family to solve it, the Tea Party stands on the sidelines and says, don't do it. Let them fail. Senator Reid this morning quoted a leading Tea Party advocate in the House who said the Federal Emergency Management Agency should be put out of business. I wonder where he lives. I wonder if his home has been spared. I wonder if he's seen people who through no fault of their own have lost everything because of a disaster. When that happens in America, we step up and help one another. We don't get tied up in some political debate. We don't find ourselves completely stopped from stepping forward and doing the right thing. And we can't let it happen this time either. Those who say that we have to cut other government programs and education, medical research, for example, to pay for devastation, whether it's from Hurricane Irene or flooding or earthquakes or tornadoes, I just don't think they understand that there are critical areas of government spending that have been cut back already, and to cut them even further would jeopardize the future of this country and the well-being of many, many families. Madam President, I want to show a chart here which demonstrates the amount requested by the administration over the years, different presidents, for the Disaster Relief Fund. In each and every one of these cases, regardless of whether it was a Democratic administration or Republican, how much of these funds do you think were offset with funds from other accounts in the federal budget? None. Zero. In 2000, when more than $3.5 billion was appropriated for disaster recovery, how much was offset? None. In 2005 and 2006, when communities all over the South were recovering from Hurricane Katrina, and more than $2 billion was appropriated in each of these two years for recovery, how much of that was offset? None. Under Republican presidents like President Bush, as well as Democratic presidents like President Clinton and Obama, 
We have not required offsets in the rest of the budget when we have literally faced a disaster. We have stepped up, provided the money, and moved forward. The number and cost of disasters has grown dramatically over the past few years. I don't want to uh, engage the Senate in the debate about climate change because I know that people get red in the face and want to come to the floor and tell us their political views of the science of this question. But I will tell you this, the property and casualty insurance industry of America testified before my committee recently and said they see what's coming. More disasters and more costs than we ever imagined. One of the experts said, be prepared to say every summer of your life from this point forward, this is the hottest summer I can ever remember. That's what the future is going to hold. And as these temperature swings get worse and worse, they precipitate these terrible storms. I'm not an expert on much, but I am perhaps a little bit of an expert after almost 30 years of flying 48 round trips a year between Illinois and Washington on flying on commercial airplanes. I think I know a little bit about that, maybe a little more than most. This has been one of the roughest periods I could ever remember. For the last several months, the storms and turbulence have been greater than I can ever recall. I hope it's an anomaly. I hope it never happens again. We're told by the experts it's likely to continue. It means more storms, more damage, more disasters. And we don't have a fund sitting somewhere in Washington waiting to pay for it. We've got to step up as the need arises and meet our obligation to the families and businesses that have been negatively affected. We know that this damage, which I showed in the southern part of my state, reaches all over the state. This is an area of Galena, Illinois, home area of General uh, Grant and President uh, Ulysses S. Grant. And this area up in the northwestern part of my state also has been flooded, causing extreme damage to the people and the area. It's just another example of what we've been through. If we freeze the money for disaster relief, as some have suggested, it means that repairs being made to recover from floods and storms from April and May won't be reimbursed. For Metropolis, Illinois, and Southern Illinois, uh, they are facing damage there that needs to be repaired, the city of Carmi as well. On Friday, President Obama requested $5 billion in new disaster funding, $500 million in supplemental money for the fiscal year 2011. The President recognizes that 2011 has been an exceptional year for natural disasters and that recovery from Hurricane Irene alone could tax FEMA way beyond what it's capable of providing for. This money is desperately needed by the families and businesses who are trying to clean up and put their lives back on track. I strongly support the supplemental appropriations for the Disaster Relief Fund. Let's help our fellow Americans get back on their feet.